one of my old examples was 3 to the second power times 3 to the third power and that gave us 3 to the fifth power. So something that we need to learn it involves integers. When we want to simplify into exponential form we've got our base numbers that are all the same so that stays the same in our answer. Well what did we do to the exponents in order to get the fifth power? We added them. Right. And so one of the things I like to use is bonds to kind of show that we are adding the two integers together that we have as exponents. Now I say integers because we could have positives or negatives. Take a look at these examples. How the heck could we simplify these? Well, there's two things that we've got to understand. Anytime that we're multiplying base numbers that are the same, we want to make sure that we add the exponents. And anytime that we are dividing base numbers that are the same, such as below 8 and 8, we want to subtract the exponents. Okay, so this takes us on to a little bit of integer review where we've got to be able to add and subtract integers. So let's do that review right now. Alright, so I'm going to take negative 6, my addition sign that we have, and my 4. And one of the things that I teach my kids all the time is if you have a 4 that's just by itself and there's no sign in front of it, we need to know that that's a positive number. Now, what we have here is we have two terms. We have a negative 6 and we have a positive 4. And what I like to teach is that we put the face of the type of number that we have underneath it. I've got 6 negatives. I also have 4 positives. And I just have to understand what do I have more of? Do I have more negatives or do I have more positives? Well, it looks like I've got more negatives than positives. I just need to know how many more of these negatives do I have. And I've got two more negatives than I have positives. And so that gives us our exponent that we need in order to simplify in exponential form. And so 4 to the negative 6th times 4 to the 4th is really 4 to the negative 2nd power. Let's do the division. We've got 5, our minus sign, and then I have a negative 3. And what we really need to watch out for here is the two negative signs that are in front of the number 3. The 5 by itself, that's a positive. We know that. But two negative signs, when it comes to our integer rules, ends up making this number a positive. And so what we learn here, and when we always watch out for those negative signs, the double negatives always are going to form a positive. If you have a negative sign and a positive sign together, it's going to be negative. But the only time that we're going to change a number and make it positive is when we have two negative signs next to each other. So in this particular case, I've got five positives and three positives, which gives me a total of eight positives. And that gives us our exponent that we need in order to simplify this expression. So we're going to say that 8 to the 5th power divided by 8 to the negative 3rd is equal to 8 to the 8th power. That wasn't too bad. Let's talk real quick about something that we're not used to seeing. What if we saw a base number, like 4, raised to the power of 0? What we have to understand is that any number raised to the power of 0 is going to change our base to the number 1. That's it. You could have 4 to the 3rd power raised to the power of 0, and again, it doesn't matter what you have. So watch out for that 0 power. Alright, let's try one last one. And let's take a look at the different ways that the answer could look 
if I was writing a question, if I chose 2 to the negative 4th divided by 2 to the negative 6th, I've got to figure out all the different types of answers that I could put that would be equivalent to this. So I'm going to circle my exponents, and since this is division, we are going to subtract. So I'm going to connect them with some bonds, and I'm going to do my integer rules off to the side. I have negative 4, and I am going to subtract negative 6. I have a negative 4, that means I have 4 negatives, so I'm going to draw that. But watch out, we've got a double negative sign here. That double negative means that my 6 is actually going to be a positive number. And this is telling me I've got 6 positives, I've got 4 negatives, so that gives me a total of 2 positives when I combine them. Okay, so our simplified answer is going to be 2 to the positive second power. How else can that look though, 2 to the positive second power? Well. One of the ways that we could take a look at it is it could be a fraction. So we could have 2 to the second power written over 1. We could also take the reciprocal of that. So another way is if we flip it, I get 1 over 2 and my exponent changes to the opposite. How else could 2 to the second power look? Well, 2 to the second power is also the multiplication problem of 2 times 2. And one last way that it could look is 2 times 2 is going to give us an answer of 4. That's not too bad. We've got to be really good at understanding all the different forms of an answer that we could have when working with positive and negative exponents. And once we understand that there's multiple forms and multiple ways that we can see it, the more that we practice it, the better we're going to get. Let's just remember that taking the reciprocal of a fraction will change the exponent to the opposite. What's that? You wish I'd do one more with multiplication? All right, let's do it. Let's take a look at all the answers that we get from 3 to the 4th power times 3 to the negative 7th start by circling our exponents. And since it's multiplication, we're going to add these. We've got to use that. So let's write our integer piece over here. I've got a positive 4, I've got a plus sign, and I have a negative 7. I know that the 4 is going to give me 4 positives. And when I have different signs, a positive and a negative, it's always going to be a negative. The only one we really got to watch out for is those two negative signs next to each other because that forms a positive. I've got seven negatives. And so I've got four positives and seven negatives. That's going to give me an exponent of three negatives. I've got three more negatives than I do positives. So one of our answers is going to end up being three to the negative third power. That's an answer. What's a different answer? Well, a different way that we can make it look is 3 to the negative third power over 1 as a fraction. What's another way? Let's take the reciprocal. When we take the reciprocal, 1 becomes the numerator, 3 is the denominator, and negative 3 becomes positive 3. What's another way? Well, we could write that multiplication problem out in the denominator. 3 to the third power is 3 times 3 times 3. And finally, we can write this as the fractional answer that it is. 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. And so our fractional answer is 1 27th. How about that?